Hello, everyone. So it seems like, uh, like there is a time to start. And uh, I'll tell you about my experience of development in Perl for Raspberry Pi. Uh, I actually made this presentation in Russian a couple of times, but I believe that no one of you have ever visited it, <laughs> or even you did, maybe you uh, didn't understand something. So I could just uh, explain things better uh, with as good English as I can. Uh, so uh, it started with a freelance job. Uh, and uh, uh, just f I just found uh, a freelance project uh, on Odesk, uh, which suggested to do uh, to create a program on Raspberry for Raspberry Pi to parse uh, user profiles and uh, find the most suitable advertisement for each user profile. And uh, it looked interesting to me. It was in, uh, at about uh, 2013, and uh, Raspberry Pi just started at that time, uh, started to be popular. So I, I just decided to try and earn some money. Uh, sent my wife to a local store. <laughs> so, as I remember, so the guy at the store was quite surprised that a woman tries to buy such thing. And uh, so, what is Raspberry Pi? I, I, I worked on Raspberry Pi Model B, uh, so currently there are upgraded versions with better uh, like specs. Uh, and uh, uh, the one I worked on had uh, the following specs. So it had 700 megahertz of uh, CPU and uh, half of a gigabyte of RAM, uh, some I/O ports, and uh, you could power it with a smartphone power adapter. It, uh, it uses not too much uh, power, uh, and co costs about 35 dollars. Uh, there are several Linux distributions. Uh, which can run on it. Uh, first of them is Raspbian, uh, so and Pedora and RiskOS and uh, RaspBMC and so on. Uh, you can just uh, use. Uh, you can just copy this uh, an image of this distribution to an SD card and uh, like put it into a computer and it will run. Uh, so I decided to, to use Raspbian because it's based on Debian. Uh, it's easy to install it. Uh, it has the necessary, the, like the reasonable Perl version, which is Perl 5.14. And uh, as you possibly know, Debian is quite friendly to Perl because you can install Spun Minus, Perl Brew, and all the required libraries, so you can possibly install a better version on Perl if you need it. Uh, and you can use a package repository to install Perl models. Uh, so what were the task objectives? Uh, objectives. As I said, you had, uh, I had to find ads that were relevant for specified users. Uh, implementation uh, had to be in Perl. And uh, it had to work on Raspberry Pi. Uh, so there was a constraint on um, like performance of the program. So we had to uh, process 100 profiles and 100 ads. And uh, it should, uh, had to take uh, more than two seconds. So here's what the user profiles file looks like. Uh, it basically contains name, uh, gender, age, and like a list of preferences for each user. Uh, so here is a file of advertisements. Uh, it contains ID, uh, image uh, URL, and uh, some uh, parameters like minimum and maximum age of the user, uh, preferred gender, and uh, like preferences of this user. Uh, so I initially I wrote a very simple algorithm which just loaded both files, uh, skipped outdated profiles. Uh, so yeah, there was a requirement to check uh, profile timestamp. You can see it here, and 
add one score point for each matching parameter of the adver advertisement, like age, gender, or preferences. And uh, choose advertis advertisement with maximum score and uh, show it to the user. Well, just uh, output advertisement ID. So we hadn't show anything, actually. Uh, so I started with a very naive approach. I used a lot of models I uh, am using in my daily job uh, and uh, wrote a program. So uh, for XML parsing, I used XML rules model. Uh, so it, you can uh, specify rules to parse each specific tag with it and uh, what to do with contents of this tag. So here it just uh, got a list of preferences from content, uh, uh, removed unnecessary fields, and uh, uh <coughs> processed playlist tag as well. Uh, so, uh, ah, and uh, I just wanted to, to say that it was a person of uh, ads. And uh, for to parse profile files, we did approximately the same thing. We, uh, but we also used data from uh, adver advertisement file and uh, calculated score for each user. Uh, for, for each user for each advertisement. So time <laughs> required for execution of such program uh, was 30 seconds which uh, is very high. So we had to optimize this program. And uh, the first uh, step I've done was to, uh, to try to use faster models. So I knew that uh, I discovered that the time model uh, takes a lot of time to load and takes a lot of time to uh, determine time zone. And uh, uh, especially when you specify it as local, uh, so I decided to replace it with date calc model. Uh, execution time of a program reduced by about four seconds, as you can see. Uh, so uh, another step was is that I discovered uh, that debugging takes a lot of time because uh, playlist is actually a very big data structure which contains uh, all the information about uh, scores and advertisements and so on. So when we tried to just to, to output it, the serialization itself of this data stru structure took uh, like about 20 seconds. So when I just uh, rewrote a debugging part like this, uh, it started to take only six seconds. <laughs> so yeah, uh, one of the things here is that uh, debug fu function uh, ex now accepts uh, a list of uh, values and serializes them only if debug option is on. And uh, in the pre previous version, it accepted the uh, already serialized structure, so like only uh, the output was optional. Um, Okay, uh, so the file of, uh, uh, of advertisements uh, uh, needs to be read only once. And uh, XML rules model actually does uh, stream processing and I thought initially that we could uh, like get some advantages from that, that's fact, but uh, we actually couldn't. So we didn't need it, so I decided to try to use some other non-streaming XML processing model, uh, which could be a bit faster. So I decided to use XML fast model, uh, uh, version from GitHub, because uh, the one on Span is a bit outdated. Uh, so uh, it, after I started to use it, uh, runtime has increased again, uh, but as we will see later, uh, it, w it will help us anyway. <laughs> so, uh, I, uh, after that, I decided to measure 
the actual work time of every piece of a program. So I used the well timer model. Uh, did, did anyone use it? Yeah, it's a good model. It's written by Gabor Zaba, and it's actually uh, is a wrapper around uh, time harass. Just a convenient wrapper, which just let you to put marks everywhere in your program, and at the end of it, uh, show a report to the user. Uh, so, yeah, I measured uh, how much how much every part of the program takes to run, and found out that uh, so these numbers. So. It seems like score calculation takes the most of time, and uh, at the second place is loading of models. So, leaving alone score calculation, I decided to optimize loading of models first, and uh, the other parts. Uh, I set marks like in this example. Uh, and got such results. <laughs> yeah. Do you see anything strange here? And here, particularly. Yeah, there is a small error here, because uh, as you sh should know, use as a compile time statement, and tmark is a runtime statement. So actually, the first one just happened after all modules have been loaded. So I replaced use with require, and uh, after like fixing it like that, <laughs> uh, I found out that uh, so which models take more time than others to load. Uh, after that, I decided to throw away XML rules completely. Uh, because uh, I didn't need streaming uh, or any asynchronous processing at, at all. I decided to get rid of, of file temp, file copy, file map. So not that they took too much time to load, but, well, it was easier to use standard Perl functions to do all the file processing. I uh, th thrown away local lib model because uh, it could be possible to set up library paths in bash rc file, file and uh, avoided to use like beautiful constants and uh, only loaded the bugging uh, model uh, on demand. Uh, so after that, I uh, found out, so there, there are no intermediate measurements, but anyway, I found, found it that uh, con uh, repeated calls to LC function uh, take really a lot of time. So I decided to lowercase the whole content before send it, sending it to processor, to calculation algorithm. So here was the, the result. So I keep, as you can see, uh, model loading has decreased and uh, took now takes only half of a second. And uh, currently, the slowest part of the program is calcu uh, score calculation algorithm. Uh, so actually, it was just two seconds to process, yeah, including uh, loading of the Perl interpreter itself. And uh, that was almost good enough, yeah. But as we found it out yesterday by Dave Cross' talk, good enough is not good enough, so we can do better. Uh, let's review the results. Uh, as I already said, calculating scores uh, takes about 70% of all the time. So what we can do with it? As we uh, remember, there is a, uh, an inner loop in it. So we have algorithm complexity of O, by o, o from M, M by N. And uh, we want to, uh, in ideal case, 
to bring it to complexity of O from N, to linear complexity. Uh, what we can do with it? Uh, first, uh, we can look at, fi at file of advertisements. So it has the following parameters, uh, like age, gender, and likes. And uh, all of these parameters have a limited range of values. Age cannot be like more than 100 or 120 in extreme case. And shouldn't be below like five years <laughs> because, uh, and definitely not below zero. So uh, gender has only two possible parameters, maybe. I don't, I'm not sure, yeah. But in the example, it was only two. Uh, and likes, and a number of likes is uh, much less than the number of ads, so actually it's also limited, uh, a limited range. Uh, so uh, when we load ads file, we already know what uh, parameters uh, have what values, and we can create an index. Here's uh, an algorithm that I used to create an index. And uh, actually, uh, <clears throat> so what it does, it uh, receives uh, a hash ref or an array ref uh, of content. And uh, for each possible age, uh, puts uh, add uh, ID of, ad, uh, of add to a hash ref to edge hash to edge hash. Yeah, for each possible gender, uh, it uses uh, gender as a key of a hash and use uh, and puts ID of uh, add to the appropriate hash. And the same thing for likes. And uh, after that, after that we can calculate score in much more efficient way. So we can uh, just take each parameter from profile, find the appropriate add ID by uh, parameter value from profile using index that we just created, and uh, just increase score of the appropriate ID. And after that, after that we can find like <laughs> the most, uh, the, the, the ad that has the, the highest number of, uh, the highest match score. Uh, so the result, uh, after that uh, program execution has uh, been shrinked, uh, execution time and uh, the problem only took about one second to execute. There is one more thing we could do with it. Uh, actually, Raspberry Pi supports overclocking, and it's like a built-in feature. And there is a special instrument for that called the Raspberry Config. And you can set CPU uh, frequency to 7, 8, 900, and so on uh, megahertz. And, uh, yeah, after some overclocking, I don't remember what exact value I used, but I think it was the maximum possible value where the program didn't crash, so that everything worked. Uh, the time has been reduced to 0.8 seconds. So my conclusions from that experience is it's better to measure er everything. Uh, don't believe the claims of authors of spun models because uh, authors tend to say that my model is very simple, uh, is very fast. Find uh, the important parts, parts uh, throw away unneeded things, optimize algorithm, and uh, there is always a place to trade CPU by RAM and vice versa, and think and win. Any questions? Did anyone understand anything? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, what? This guy? No? Oh, good stuff. So, any questions? Did you consider using NYT props to look at performance? Uh, 
Yeah, I, I already had such a question before. Someone else asked it. Uh, I think I didn't consider using it because uh, like my program was plain in some sense. So there were no subroutines or something like that. And uh, as I remember, the well NAT, NAT prof uh, shows you a time of execution of each subroutine. Is it right? Yeah, so I, I think it wouldn't be too convenient for me. So, or maybe I just use the, fir the first, well, it, yeah. In fact, if, I'll, if I'd try it again, I, I'd possibly use the Valentin Pro for that. But uh, th this method with, with the Valentin Timer was good enough. I'm not sure. No, I, I don't think so. I, I, I think, uh, so the question is whether XML parser you, uh, was a pure Perl parser. Uh, I, I think that it has, it, it's, it had a C backend, actually. Yes, almost didn't change anything. It's a very tiny model. Uh, because uh, I uh, used it before, I used uh, any events before, and uh, uh, I know that there are several models like like this, uh, like modern Perl or Uni Perl, but for some reason, so I just preferred it at the time. Okay, no more questions. Really? Yeah, you see, you have to, uh, 60% of the time is the program. Yeah, you're right. Uh, why don't you have it always on and just feed it with data and it's it out? So, uh, yeah, I understand what you mean. Uh, we could just make it a diamond of some kind, right? And uh, make it hang in the ground. Yeah, it's a possible optimization, but uh, it's a bit harder to deploy a program like this. And uh, anyway, if we, if, if we need more performance, it can be done easily. So not a problem. So yeah, I thought about it. But, well, it works. <laughs> Thanks.